this is a plant, specifically a monocotyledonous plant. Wait, what? Well, you see, there are different types of plants, and this one's called a monocot. Different types of plants? Aren't plants just plants? Well, unfortunately, no. Plants aren't just plants. You see, we're just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of plant classification. Monocots and dicots are just two subgroups of the angiosperm taxon, and the angiosperms are themselves a subgroup of another group of plants called the tracheophytes. These tracheophytes, or vascular plants, get their name from the vascular tissue they possess, xylem and phloem, or basically plant arteries that conduct water and nutrients internally throughout the plant. The tracheophytes consist of angiosperms, gymnosperms, and ferns. For those who don't know, angiosperms are flowering plants, which develop their seeds inside an ovary, which is protected by a fruit. Gymnosperms, or conifers, are the cone-producing plants. They lack the presence of ovaries and develop their seeds in woody reproductive organs known as cones. Because they don't have fruits for protection, the seeds are completely exposed, leading them to be sometimes referred to as naked seed plants. Ferns lack seeds altogether, instead relying on spores for reproduction. Non-vascular plants are called bryophytes. There are two main groups of plants in the plant kingdom, the bryophytes, or non-vascular plants, and the tracheophytes, or vascular plants. Bryophytes consist of liverworts, hornworts, and mosses, and they were the first to evolve. Lacking vascular tissue and roots, these plants rely on their leaves for water and nutrient uptake and transportation. Water and nutrients diffuse through the leaves and into the plant, it is for this reason that bryophytes must stay in constant contact with water, growing predominantly in moist environments. Now that we have that down, let's start from the beginning. Basically, early plants were all aquatic, but things were getting pretty cramped in the oceans, so these early plant pioneers, the bryophytes, needed to figure out a way to support themselves. Since they're not in water anymore, they have to deal with this new thing they discovered called gravity, which makes it difficult for them to stand up straight. It is for this reason that most bryophytes are small and inconspicuous, never growing to be very tall, like mosses. So, the other main group are the tracheophytes, the vascular plants. Evolving after the bryophytes, this group of plants solved the gravity issue which plagued their predecessors. They invented this cool little thing called lignified vascular tissue. Boom! Problem solved! Not only can plants grow on land, but they can now grow extremely tall as well. Anyway, this group consists of all of the other plants, ferns, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. And of these subdivisions, or subgroups, the angiosperms are the major players. They constitute around 80% of all of the world's land plants, with over 250,000 species. As such, you can see why this group, which is itself a subdivision of a bigger group, the tracheophytes, is subdivided into smaller groups. It was originally thought that these two groups were the only subdivisions of the angiosperm taxon, but we now know, thanks to the advent of phylogenetics and just thus getting smarter with time, that there are actually eight groups of angiosperms. Traditionally, we classified an angiosperm as being either a dicot or a monocot, based on the plant's characteristics. However, as time went on, we started finding plants that exhibited both monocot and dicot characteristics. We now know that this is because of shared ancestry between some monocot and dicot species. You see, there wasn't a clean break in the evolutionary branches of these two groups. The fact of the matter is, the angiosperm taxon simply does not fit neatly into just two clades, or groups. But most of it does. So we keep this classification system because it's easier to classify plants, unless you're trying to classify one of the 2% of plants that don't fit this classification scheme. But if you find yourself in a position where you're trying to classify one of these plants, then you're probably a properly trained botanist and know a lot more about plants than I do. So... Okay, now we know what monocots and dicots are, so we can finally go over the key differences between these two plant groups and how to identify them. There are five key differences between the two groups. The first key difference is the number of cotyledons the plant seed possesses. A cotyledon is kind of like a starter leaf that develops inside of the seed. 
without this cotyledon, or starter leaf, the plant will not be able to photosynthesize and produce enough energy to grow more leaves. As the name suggests, monocots, or monocotyledons, possess only one cotyledon in its seed phase. While the dicotyledon, or dicot, possesses two. But this isn't going to help you very much in classifying fully grown plants. The best way to tell the difference between a monocot and a dicot is by looking at the vein pattern. Monocots have parallel veins, while dicots have reticulate, or webbed veins. Another key difference is that monocots have a fibrous root system, while dicots possess a tap root. Furthermore, monocots have scattered vascular bundles, and dicots have a ringed vascular bundle system. However, this is only good if you're looking at the cross section of a stem. Lastly, monocots tend to have flower parts in multiples of three, while dicots tend to have flower parts in multiples of four or five. So there you have it. Thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed and learned something as well. To everyone who subscribed, thank you for giving me the encouragement to continue to make these videos. It's much appreciated. Well, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.